Hey friends, welcome back to Cleaning Therapy. My name is Jenny, if you're new here, and today I've got a really nice long compilation for you. This is a deep cleaning marathon, and I hope that it brings you all the motivation that you need to clean whatever you need to clean around your house. Whatever's on your to-do list, I believe this video can handle it. So. If you're relaxing today and just watching this for motivation for later, get yourself all nice and comfortable and I think you'll really enjoy it and it'll probably be pretty relaxing to watch. But if you've got some cleaning to do, go ahead and put me up on your TV or device and let's get to cleaning. This video is almost two hours and 45 minutes long, so you should be able to get a lot of cleaning done without having to change out videos and find new videos. So I really hope that it helps you as you're getting your cleaning done today. And the checklist that I mentioned in the video is available in my description box. You can just click the link and you can get a free cleaning checklist if you'd like to clean along with me. And don't forget to comment down below and let me know what you guys are up to lately, what you're cleaning. So without further ado, let's get into this deep cleaning marathon. Hey friends, welcome back to Cleaning Therapy. My name is Jenny, and today starts week one of our spring cleaning challenge. Now, if you're new to my channel today and you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, I'll explain everything during the video. But I'm gonna go ahead and start here in my pantry, and I'm just gonna get everything out so I can deep clean and declutter my pantry. So I'm just starting by pulling everything out so that I can clean these shelves off really good. And I noticed that there was some scuff marks on the wall, so I'm gonna use this magic eraser to work on those a little bit. Now, if you are new to my channel today, I just wanna officially say welcome. My name is Jenny and I'm married to Tony and we have three kids and we live here in Southern Louisiana. And on my channel, I love to share tons of cleaning motivation as well as decluttering and organizing decorating, and a few home projects. I started my channel to try to encourage others to use cleaning as a tool for depression and anxiety. And that's why my channel is called Cleaning Therapy. And I truly believe that cleaning can be therapeutic if you have the right mindset. There are so many good ways to manage your mental health and I use tons of different ways, but cleaning is one of my little go-to kind of tools in my toolkit. So it's one of my go-to stress relievers. And the tagline here on my channel is clean your way to calm. So today is day one of our clean your way to calm challenge, which just is a way for us to all clean together and relieve stress and get all the benefits of a decluttered and clean home all together in the month of February. If you'd like to join us for this challenge, I would love to have you. You can go in my description box and you can look for the email sign up list for the Clean Your Way to Calm Challenge and you'll get a free checklist with everything you need to clean and in the exact order that you can clean it and we can clean our way to calm together. And I am so excited to announce that a very good friend of mine, Kristen, is actually going to be completing the challenge on her channel and her channel is called Cora's Cozy Castle, and I'm gonna have her channel linked in my description box because her video is going out right along with mine today. So after you finish this video, make sure to head on over to her channel and subscribe while you're there and tell her that I sent you. I'm just getting these little canisters all dusted off here before I put them back in the pantry and then I'm going to take those larger gray bins and declutter those as well and get those washed out. And if you're on Instagram, I'm at Jenny Teal for my personal account and then I have an account for this channel as well at underscore cleaning therapy and you'll get some channel updates on there as well as motivation for your cleaning challenge and I would love it if you guys would tag me with your clean and calm spaces so as you're going through the challenge and your house is just getting transformed and just looking so amazing and so clean and calm I would love it if you would tag me at underscore cleaning therapy I would love to see your spaces and celebrate with you and if you have a cleaning channel and you wanna film yourself doing the cleaning challenge, make sure and tag me because I'd love to come over and say hi and see how your spaces came out as well. I wanna stay wide open. 
now that we have all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, let me know in the comments what you guys are up to. What are you cleaning? Are you doing the challenge? Are you doing some other types of cleaning? Are you getting ready to do your spring cleaning? Just let me know in the comments what you're up to and what kind of cleaning you've been doing around your house. I'm just going to go ahead and wash these bins out because they get really nasty from all the treats and stuff that go in there the kids snacks and they just get dusty and dingy so i'm going to go ahead and scrub those out really good and then i'm going to put them back in the pantry and i do want to eventually do like a pantry makeover i think that would be so fun just to paint inside there and put up some new shelving so i do see that happening in the future but for today i just wanted to get it nice and deep cleaned I don't know if any of you guys have tried these recently, but the little Emmy's coconut cookies, they're so delicious. And they come in the chocolate and the vanilla. And I just wanted to point those out because I have been loving those. They're very satisfying and they make such a good snack. And how the wind makes way across the field. Mm -hmm. Let me take a breath. Let me be a part of some. this rack right here I don't know if you can see but there's like cobwebs on it I think there's actually an insect on it so it definitely needs to be cleaned uh, really good in the sink here and I do feel a little bit bad because the order that I filmed this video in like all of the insane motivation is toward the end of the video pretty much like the second half of the video and I'm not saying that so that you'll like skip ahead but I'm just saying that if I could have put the video in reverse and like put the last half of the video first and this part last I probably would have just to keep it a little more interesting but it would have been really strange because it goes from light to dark and so if I flip-flopped it it would go from dark to light and I thought that was really strange so I just left it the way it was this is actually how I filmed this video in chronological order it took me all day I think I cleaned for about eight hours so you're gonna see 40 minutes but this is actually eight hours of cleaning And again, with this project, I am just following straight down my checklist in order. I tried to create the checklist so that all of the cleaning tasks were in order from cleaning from top to bottom in your kitchen so that you really could just kind of take your mind off of what should I do next and just follow the checklist. And so far it's working pretty well, but you guys need to let me know uh, how it goes this week. And then next week we'll be working on our closets, so I'm really looking forward to that. I can't wait until all of my closets are decluttered and the clothing is decluttered and they're nice and deep cleaned. Next on my checklist is to clean the inside of the microwave. So I like to just take a cup of vinegar and microwave it for about five minutes and then let it sit for about five minutes. And just be careful because it's gonna be really hot and the glass tray inside is really hot too, so get your oven mitts ready. And then I have this little vinegar spray. It's vinegar and Dawn dish soap and water and I just spray a little extra on that too just to kind of make sure it's wet before I start wiping. And everything really does come off very easily when I do it this way. Way. And I know a lot of people complain about the smell of vinegar, and I'm one of those crazy people that I love the smell of vinegar. I get it from my dad's side. We are all vinegar fanatics. So I love the vinegar smell, but if you don't like the vinegar smell, I heard that lemons work really well too. You can put lemons in a bowl of water and microwave them, and you should get the same results.
So now my microwave is all nice and clean and sparkly, except for these little areas. I don't know um, how this all gets in here, but it just gets really um, dirty and dusty. And so I wanted just an easy way to clean that out. So I went and grabbed a Q-tip and I took that same hot vinegar that just came out of the microwave and just dipped it in there and it just came right off. So that was a really easy way to clean that. To deep clean the outside of the microwave, I'm just going to first go over it with a hot soapy rag. This is a microfiber cloth actually and I have a little bit of dish soap on there and I just want to clean it before I shine it because my normal little cleaning routine is basically just to shine my microwave. See I have the Wyman's and then I go ahead and I shine it. But I wanted to deep clean it first because dish soap like Dawn or Palm Olive is a degreaser and so I wanted to make sure I actually degreased it first before I shined it up. But you don't want to leave it wet so if you do um, wash it first with dish soap, don't like leave it wet. Make sure you dry it off if there's going to be any time between you washing it and shining it. So here it is all nice and shiny and clean and I'm really really happy with that. Now to deep clean my faucet, I'm going to use Barkeeper's Friend and I just think that that's going to be the best way to kind of have a scrubbing agent because it has the baking soda in it and so it'll really pick up a lot of the grime that's kind of around there, soap scum, all that kind of stuff. And it also kind of shines it up because you know when you use this in your sink, it shines up your sink and so I found that it shined up my faucet really nicely. And it might depend on what kind of faucet that you have. Um, some faucets you probably don't want to use Barkeeper's Friend on, but mine is just uh, stainless and so it works really well. Nothing's gonna hold us down. Yeah, we are taking off the ground now. Stay with me, we're aiming for the sky. And I'm just gonna continue using the Barkeeper's Friend here in the sink as well. And then stay tuned because we're gonna be deep cleaning the disposal and I've got a really nice tip for you guys on how to do it and it's gonna smell so nice and fresh. To clean the disposal, I like to put a cup of ice and then I mix baking soda with lemon essential oil and I just mix it in a mason jar and then put that in and then put more ice. And then you're gonna wanna just run the disposal with no water first for about 30 seconds and then with water for about 30 seconds as well. And then you're done and you can turn the disposal off before you put your hand in there and clean the little rubber tracking part that's inside. That little combo did a great job of cleaning and deodorizing the disposal. Next on the checklist is the cooktop. So I'm using the Mrs. Myers cream cleanser to clean the cooktop today, just really because it smells good. And I'm using my little sponge and just good old fashioned elbow grease to get this thing cleaned. And 
once it's clean, it always looks a little bit cloudy. So I like to go over it with the glass cleaner and that just brings back the shine. And stay tuned because we've got plenty of decluttering and organizing motivation coming up very soon. On a treasure hunt. When they sing and dance Oh, I wish it was me Every night When I close my eyes I see Next on my checklist is to declutter my kitchen counters. So before I can deep clean the counters, I have to get everything off and I'm taking this opportunity to put away my winter decor and I'm not gonna see any decor in this space until spring. It's gonna feel a little empty, but it's really the only way that I can get everything deep cleaned and also really honestly just take a break from decor for a couple of weeks. It doesn't hurt to just have a clean slate and that way when you go to decorate, you really aren't like hindered by anything that's already out. You can just have this blank canvas to create on. And if you're wondering why I have a baby crib in my fireplace area, our two-year-old Alex just went to a big boy bed. Well, it's a little toddler bed actually. It's not very big, but um, we have his crib here for donation. And so that's why I have a crib right there. But I'm just gonna get all this stuff cleaned really well and all the winter decor put away so that I can deep clean my counters. And just to point out, I do leave some things out like staple pieces like this. Um, it just has our salt and pepper shakers and you know, that little tray that you saw with the picture on it. I do kind of have some year round staples um, that I decorate around. Let me know in the comments if you have some year round things that kind of stay out or if you kind of change everything out with the seasons. I feel like my decor style is pretty neutral and very simple. And um, I just find that having the staple items just makes everything easier and I can kind of decorate them for pretty much any season. And it just keeps it simpler for me so that decorating is a little more fun and a little less overwhelming, but there's no right or wrong. It's just whatever is easiest and best for you. Um, but I'm curious as to how you like to do decorations. I was just gonna spray down this pitcher, but when I looked inside, it was so dirty that I decided to just wash it in the sink. It's just easier that way sometimes. And then as soon as I get finished with one other thing on the counter, my soap dispensers, I'm gonna actually deep clean my Keurig. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned if you need a little inspiration or motivation for deep cleaning your Keurig. You set my world off And this soap dish had so much soap scum on it, I couldn't believe I let it go that long. I think it's just hard to see because it's white on white. Like the soap is clear and so it's so hard to see. And I honestly did not know it had gotten that bad. So I'm really glad that I got that cleaned off. And same with my Keurig. When I pulled out the tray and you guys saw in the intro what it looked like, could not believe that there was so much gunk in there and the drippings from the coffee. So I went way too long on that one. So that was definitely a lesson to me that I need to clean that way more frequently. So the way I deep clean the Keurig is first with vinegar. So you fill the reservoir about three quarters with the vinegar, and then I let that completely run through. So you just do however many cups it takes for all the vinegar to go through. And you're gonna see that it's kind of pushing out all the coffee grounds and coffee, you know, the water's gonna look really murky. And then when you're done, it's gonna look a little more like this. So then you just fill it up with water and do the same thing, but just with water. And then that kind of just gets rid of like the vinegar smell and taste. 
and then I take out this little pot holder and I just take it apart and I grab a paper clip and just kind of straighten it out and that's a good way to clean inside the needle so you can clean it in the pot holder and then you can clean it also in the Keurig itself the top needle you can clean that out with the paper clip and then I'm just gonna deep clean the pod holder before I put it back in as well as the reservoir and I'm putting in a wet paper towel to go through this part just be really careful because you don't want the needle to come down on you if you decide to do this um, I don't know why I chose a paper towel I should have done a washcloth so that it wouldn't disintegrate so easily but thankfully it stayed intact but that was just a good way to get some of that coffee out of there and then I'm just cleaning around the outside of the Keurig before I come to this tray part so the top part wasn't so bad but the bottom part was really hideous so I knew that it wouldn't just come right off uh, by scrubbing it so I actually filled it with vinegar and just let it sit for a while and then when I thought it was maybe possible to clean it um, I grabbed a toothbrush and just kind of went to town on it and it actually worked really well it came out very clean but this is me just letting it soak while I clean the rest of the Keurig. to the car on a Friday night I want to drive with you looking for a bar in the nearest town I've never seen a sky so blue we don't have a plan and the night is young it doesn't matter what we do there ain't nobody like there ain't nobody like you look so beautiful and I'm so lucky to be yours and you take it And now that the Keurig is deep cleaned, I'm ready to deep clean my countertops. So I'm just grabbing everything off of them and moving them to the dining room table really quick. And then I'm gonna actually get out my dish soap again with my warm microfiber cloth. And I just wanna go over them with the dish soap because I wanna degrease them. I don't wanna just keep adding layers of shine on top with like shining products because that's kind of like my weekly routine. This is more of a deep cleaning routine. So I wanna make sure that they are truly clean before I add any shine product. And I forgot to mention that this video is a part two. So if you're looking for any motivation to clean something that I'm not cleaning in the kitchen right now, it's probably in the first video. So I'll make sure and link it in my description box as well as at the end of this video in case you wanna check out part one because that's when I clean everything else. And to put a little shine back on my granite, I love to use the Method Daily Granite Cleaner. It smells really good and it puts a beautiful shine on my very old granite. So I'm actually gonna be replacing my granite in just a little while. I'm really excited. I actually chipped the corner off when we first moved here, uh, what was it, 12 years ago? And so this granite was original with the house and it's fine, it's just that I totally broke the corner off and um, it was right when we moved in and I glued it back with some tacky glue and do you know it's actually lasted for 12 years so but needless to say it really is time to just replace the whole thing and start over so I'm really excited to see how that changes the look of the kitchen And now the counters are all decluttered and deep cleaned and also devoid of all personality, but that's okay because we're gonna be adding decorations very shortly. But at least it's clean and I can move on to the next item on my checklist. So I'm gonna go ahead and polish up all my stainless, but first I'm gonna go ahead and degrease it with the dish soap. So that's my next step to degrease and polish the rest of my stainless. 
And I feel like I should just touch on the fact that this checklist is like totally just for fun. So it's just a way to stay motivated. It's kind of like a helpful tool so that we don't have to like try to think of all the different things that we might clean in a given space and it just takes it off of our minds. But it's really just a guideline. So if there's certain things you wanna skip or if you wanna add to it, you know, by all means just modify it for your space. Um, so I don't want anybody to feel like they're failing if they don't do everything on the checklist or that they're not part of the challenge. Everyone who cleans along with me is part of the challenge and I am so glad to have each and every one of you along for it. Doesn't matter if you do one thing off the checklist or if you do everything off the checklist, you're a part of the challenge and I'm so glad that you're doing it with us. up is to declutter and clean out the lower kitchen cabinets so this is our rice cabinet uh, my husband is half Thai and so we have like stuff to make sticky rice so I like to keep it in this cabinet right here so I'm gonna get that all cleaned off and then I'm gonna be moving on to the corner cabinet and the corner cabinet you're gonna see is a big mess because that's where we keep our toaster and I feel like whatever cabinet you keep the toaster in is sure to just get full of toast crumbs. It's, you know, it just needs to be vacuumed out. So this is kind of like the small appliances area. So I'm going to pull everything out and see if there's anything that we don't need or use. And I'm gonna get it cleaned out really well. And you're definitely gonna wanna stay tuned because as soon as I finish cleaning out all of these cabinets, we're gonna get to the biggest motivation of this whole video, I think. And that's the before and after of my filthy grout. My kitchen floor grout was black. I mean, literally black. And so it was just such a wonderful transformation to get it completely clean and looking literally brand new. So stay tuned for that. These are the items that did not make the cut. So the last two years I've decluttered these items I have not used. So it's an ice cream maker and a waffle maker. So those are going to Goodwill. And next up is this little baking cabinet slash mixing bowls and colanders. So I'm going to pull everything out, get it cleaned up and see if there's anything in here that I need to declutter. So this is what I ended up decluttering from that cabinet and I had a couple things that I'm going to pull out and put in one of my upper cabinets. So that's what you see me doing right here and then I'm moving down into the cabinet with like the garbage bags and my husband's lunchbox, paper towels, it's kind of a random cabinet but it goes by really really fast so it's a small cabinet. And then next up on the other side of the kitchen I'll start in the cabinet that has all of my cutting boards. And this cabinet right here is like the awkward corner cabinet. And so I have all of my cast iron in here and I'm not gonna declutter any of this cause I absolutely love it. And I just need to get it cleaned and put right back in. And then next up is the cabinets under the kitchen sink. And those I just need to wipe down that mat really well. It's kind of like a shelf liner and that does kind of get really gross. And so I'm gonna make sure and clean that out really well. Quiet for a day now. Can't bear the silence inside my own head. I keep 
This last cabinet right here is going to be really quick too. This is just where I keep like my pots and pans and the lids. So now moving into the drawers and I did not want to take all of these drawer organizers out because they kind of fit in like a perfect way and I was afraid I wouldn't be able to quickly get them back in there just like that. So I'm just going to declutter these drawers and keep the organizers in here and just clean them while they're still in the drawers. So I'm going to do that really quick and then we're moving on to wiping the outsides of the cabinets. And I feel like I've been talking so much on this video and you guys probably want to hear more music right now. So I'm going to let you listen to the music while I finish decluttering these drawers.
Okay, the cabinets are all decluttered and cleaned and the outsides are deep cleaned. And so now I'm just giving my kitchen a really good sweep and I'm gonna mop the floors because I want the floors to be very clean before I clean the grout. And I just wanna thank you so much if you're still with me at this point because this video is much longer than my usual video. So if you are still with me right now, I just wanna say a special thank you for supporting my channel. So I'm gonna go over this floor with my light and easy steam mop and the method floor cleaner in the spearmint sage scent. And then we'll work on getting this grout clean. It never has. As I told you, it's not you. This is something from before I even met. Clean my grout, I'm gonna be using the Clorox Clinging Bleach Gel. And this is pretty much like a miracle product. It works so, so well. I had seen the reviews and my friend was telling me about how well it worked. We even tried a swatch in her house and it worked so well, but I really just couldn't believe it until I saw it on my own tile. So you just kind of trace the grout lines with this and it's in such a nice little dispenser so it makes it very easy and then you just let it sit for like five, 10 minutes. Basically, by the time you're done the floor, it's probably gonna be time to scrub it off. And you don't have to scrub hard like I thought I had to in the beginning, but you don't. Like just a little toothbrush or grout brush will get it right up. You do not have to scrub at all, really. And just a couple things I wanna say about this product. Uh, number one, um, it's a bleach product. So I don't know if this is compatible with the grout lines that you have or if it might disintegrate them a little bit or break them up. I tested a little patch on mine and it was perfectly fine. And I know with these kind of products, like you don't wanna use them a lot. So you don't wanna put bleach on your grout lines like every week or anything like that, or even every month. This is just like an occasional way to deep clean your grout lines. You know, it's kind of a hack. So. You know, I would plan on only doing this once or twice a year because I wouldn't want to risk like my grout breaking up or anything like that. Um, but I, like I said, I had no problems with it. It didn't do anything bad to my grout. It looked perfect, but I just want to say like proceed, you know, with caution and make sure you test a little patch to make sure that your grout like tolerates the bleach. And then also make sure you're protecting yourself by like opening windows, opening doors. You might wanna wear a mask or some eyewear, just whatever you would do when you're working with bleach, just go ahead and take those precautions. So I'm just gonna finish scrubbing right here. It only took me about probably 15 or 20 minutes uh, to scrub all this off. And then I'm going to go over it with a mop until I think that I've gotten like most of the bleach off. And guys, I have gray grout, so if it doesn't look white, it's because it's not white. I have gray grout, and I have not seen it look this good since the day we installed it. It literally looks like day one of getting our new floors. So I was more than satisfied. I was like pretty much astonished at how wonderful this turned out. My floors looked like the day they came in. And I'm gonna go ahead in with this grout sealer because I would actually like them to stay this way for a little bit. I feel like they get dirty so easily and so quickly. And so sealing the grout is probably the best way to not have to use that bleach you know, too frequently. And so I'm taking the extra time and the extra step to seal the grout. Uh, so hopefully it'll last me a while. And at this point it was about 11 p.m. and I was so tired and all I wanted to do was just go take a shower and get in bed but I had one more item on my checklist and that was to deep clean my kitchen trash can and it was obviously too late to go outside and spray it down with the hose so I decided to just give it a bath <laughs> so here I am just scrubbing down the trash can in the bathtub which unfortunately means I have to deep clean the bathtub after but that's okay because I was just really glad to get that last item checked off my list to say that my list was finally complete.
For the inside of the lid here, I'm just using Barkeeper's Friend, and then I'm gonna go ahead and polish the outside of the trash can. We are on closets this week and we're going to be decluttering and deep cleaning the closets in our home and this is going to be two parts this video so here is part one and I'm starting here in my son Alex's closet. Alex is our youngest, he's two years old and his closet is kind of the biggest disaster right now because we just recently moved him to a toddler bed from a crib. So we currently have kind of put everything in his closet so that we can lock it and he can start training to sleep at night without playing with all the toys. We just didn't want that to be too much of a temptation for him. So today was the day that I needed to pull all of that out. It's been a couple of weeks since he's been in his bed and I just wanna make sure that I develop a really good system moving forward. So here's just a nice shot of everything that I pulled out of the closet. It's a lot of stuff, but I guarantee you not everything will be going back in there because we're gonna be doing some serious decluttering. But before I can do any decluttering, I need to come in here and deep clean. And for that, I just have a washcloth with some hot soapy water. I have some Dawn dish soap that I've put on the washcloth and I'm just gonna wipe everything down that I can in the closet. So looking at my checklist here, the first thing that's already checked off is to remove everything from the closets. The next thing is to check the ceiling corners for cobwebs and then to clean the shelving and the drawers. Next is to clean the baseboards and the floor and then we move on to decluttering. So I didn't see any cobwebs in here, thankfully. I have seen them other places in my home, but I'm moving on to cleaning the shelving, cleaning the baseboards, and I'll clean the floors as well. For these crayon marks inside the wall, I'm gonna go ahead and use a magic eraser, and that does work really well for most types of crayon or marker or even pen. It, it'll come right out with the magic eraser. So I love to have these on hand. They're very, very helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this wall right here. And if there's any other marks on your wall while you're doing your challenge that you see, go ahead and tackle those right now because it's one of those things that we see all year round and it kind of bothers us but if we don't take the time you know once or twice a year to just go through and take care of those marks on the wall usually they'll just kind of stay around and drive us crazy forever so I like to take a couple times a year just to kind of get any little marks that I see on the walls even if it's like a place that needs a touch up painting I like to do that a couple times a year and that way it just kind of gets it off of my mind Now that I was able to get a couple of things checked off of my list, I had to take a little pause because it was time for Alex to go down for his nap, and so he needed his room to go down and take a nice, good nap. And so I actually pulled everything out and brought it into my dining room in front of the fireplace, and that is gonna be my decluttering zone while he naps. So I plan on just getting everything decluttered while he's napping, and then when he wakes up, I can go back in his room and put everything away. Just cause the thought of being made me feel less than I am. While I'm decluttering, I'd love to take an opportunity to introduce myself if you're new. My name is Jenny and I'm a mom of three here in Southern Louisiana and I'm married to Tony and I love to do cleaning motivation on my channel. Cleaning motivation, decluttering, organizing, decorating, home projects, anything that will help you create a clean and calm space for yourself and for your family. That is my passion here on YouTube. I'm here to help motivate you, to inspire you, um, hopefully that we can just clean together, that we can do this together, and that you would have that space that you want, the space that makes you happy, relaxed, comfortable, and enjoying your home. And I truly believe that having a clean and calm space is actually really good for our mental health and well-being and I've seen it in my own life over and over the past few years that I've dedicated myself to creating a clean and calm home and so it's just very much a passion of mine I'd have to start a whole nother YouTube channel just to talk about all the ways it's helped me but for now I just like to clean along with you and offer support and encouragement and inspiration however I can so if that sounds interesting to you I'd love it if you would subscribe and join my YouTube family 
family because I would love to see you on the next video. And if you're interested in joining the Clean Your Way to Calm Challenge, it is absolutely not too late. Just go ahead and visit my description box and there's a link down there and it says join the challenge. Click on that link and then you'll be automatically sent a free printable cleaning checklist. And it's going to have everything you need and in the order that you need to clean it. And we can clean our way to calm together. And these videos will be up pretty much forever so you can always refer back to them and you can complete the challenge anytime that is convenient for you. So here in this basket we have Alex's train stuff for his Thomas the Train table and we have a track set and as you can see I'm putting it away in a Ziploc bag because I just feel like it's a lot of pieces that he's really not old enough to kind of keep the track together and to play with it the way it was designed for so I'm just going to put those away um, at the top of his closet for when he's a little bit older maybe when he turns three we can try to build the track but right now he really just likes to play with the trains and then here is just a little toy basket that we actually keep in his room that just has stuffed animals and that's really okay for him to play with during the night or like as he's trying to fall asleep. This is a cute little space tent that we have for him and I'm just rolling back up and putting it in the bag. Once I've got everything that I know I'm keeping in the closet, it's going against this window. And that is just telling my mind that it's already been dealt with. I don't have to be overwhelmed or confused about where I'm at in this process. The ones by the window are done and they're ready to go back in the closet. Here you see me going through in these dark gray bins. This is more like sentimental items. So this is baby clothes, baby memorabilia. You can see why I saved this for last because this is the hard stuff, okay? It's pretty easy to declutter old and broken toys that nobody plays with, but it is pretty hard to declutter and sort through the baby items, at least for me it is. So I, you can tell I'm taking longer to do this part. I'm struggling a little bit more. I'm a little more indecisive but I'm just trying to push through and do the very best that I can. I can always declutter some more later, but I'm just trying to at least get myself to donate a few items so that somebody else can use them and they're not just sitting up at the top of his closet. So I'm forcing myself to do that, but I'm not forcing myself to get rid of it all. I'm just saying, try to make at least one little bin that you can donate so somebody else can enjoy these clothes. And I was really proud of myself for doing that. Um, it's a good feeling and I still kept plenty of things uh, that are gonna go back up in his closet. Life would be so hard. I grew up without a scar. Just living my life with no big worries. And I've always known what I want. Just didn't know what came along Finding myself a much less happy Back in the days I used to dream about one day A life so amazing Not everyone judging me Don't wanna care about them Though it hurts so Friends, please let me know in the comments how you're doing in your Clean Your Way to Calm challenge. How is it going? How has the checklist been treating you? Um, what modifications have you needed to make? Because we all have different homes and different situations and the checklist might have had more things than you really need to do or it could have had some things left off that you needed to add. So I'm curious, let me know how you were able to modify your checklist and also how it has been feeling because like we said, the mental health is a really important factor. And so how has it been feeling to clean your way to calm, to declutter, to organize and just to you know get everything looking and feeling completely different how does that feel in your mind how does that feel in your nervous system um, it feels really good to me and I just want to know if you guys are enjoying it as well so let me know I would also love for you to tag me on Instagram with your clean and calm spaces and you can do that at underscore cleaning therapy you can go ahead and follow me over there if you're not already I also have a personal account at Jenny Teal and I'd love to get to know you a little bit better over there as well and feel free to private message me over there i love getting dms from you guys and getting to know you better and i love it when you say hi to me so please come find me over there too it just gives them the right.
now I'm just getting everything nicely back into the closet. His clothes are nice and decluttered, although he still has more clothes than me, I'll have to admit. But I have some of his personal items at the top, the baby memorabilia. And then on the other side, I have things that he can grow into and things that are waiting for him for next year. And then I had that little toy cubby that you saw in there. And we're gonna still keep the main toys like that, the ones with tons of pieces in his closet so that he's not trying to play with them at night when he's supposed to be sleeping. We're gonna leave his books out in his room, as you can see um, right under this window. And we're also gonna keep that little bin that you saw with the stuffed animals. So he'll be able to wind down at night with his books and his little stuffed animals, but the rest of his toys are gonna be in his closet with a little child lock on it so that he wouldn't get too distracted but we can go ahead and bring all those out every day during the day and play with them. And this is how his closet turned out, so I'm really happy with it, and I'm glad that I finally got around to giving this closet a little TLC. And now that Alex's closet is finished, I'm moving on to my closet. And the before shot of my closet might have you fooled that this one's not so bad and it's already done. But even though it's not quite as bad as Alex's was, it still needs a lot of work. There's a lot of decluttering that needs to be done in here. And most of all, it just needs a really good deep clean. So I had redone this closet last year i believe i did make a video on it when i first decluttered and organized my closet so it does look pretty similar to how it came out in that video but i wanted to take a, a step further this time and i wanted to do a little more decluttering and be a little more intentional about that because i really don't wear a lot of these clothes so i'm pulling everything out just kind of following my checklist I also wanted to move a few things around by my vanity area. Um, I had just recently created a vision board and I wanted to put my vision board in my closet so that I could look at it every day when I'm getting ready. So those are my goals for this closet and I'm gonna get to work. And I always work my way from top to bottom when I'm cleaning. So that's how I've structured the checklist. Everything is in order from cleaning from top to bottom. And I'm using the exact same method I did on his closet just using the washcloth with the warm water and the Dawn dish liquid because I just feel like that's a really good degreaser. It breaks up dirt and stuck on things that may have been on there for months, who knows. So sometimes with the humidity down here in the south, I feel like it makes the dust almost like stick to things. And so I really like to go in there with just a hot soapy rag and just kind of wash it all off. I just like to Cinderella style my floors. I know it probably looks crazy, but I just like to do that because my eyes are close to the floor and I can see exactly what I'm cleaning and make sure that it's really and truly clean. When I mop, I am so far away from the floor. The older I get, the worse my eyesight gets and I really don't even know if it's clean. So this way I know exactly that the floors are clean. And this shoe rack was so dusty, so I was so glad that I finally got a chance to clean it. Um, I'm really surprised that I hadn't noticed just how dusty it had gotten, but I really like this shoe rack. It holds a lot of shoes and it works really well. And I think I might actually get a couple of more of these for our other closets because I think like my older children might like this as well. But it's something I think I had picked up last year. So after decluttering my shoes, I'm just gonna place them back on this shoe rack. I was trying hard to get by, taking day by day But baby, then you came along I know I never felt that strong Nothing's gonna hold us down Yeah, we are taking off the ground now Stay with me 
I'm just gonna go ahead and put these boots back and I have some purses and bags that go up here as well now that this shelf is clean. And while I'm doing that, I would love to find out from you guys, what do you think your number one obstacle is in getting tasks like this done? Uh, do you feel like it's just overwhelming to even think about or do you feel like it's just something you don't have the energy for or the time for? Let me know in the comments what is your number one obstacle for getting some deep cleaning done, decluttering, organizing, and just kind of projects like this. For me, I would say that it's probably more tied to the overwhelm of it all. Sometimes I feel like just the thought of you know going through everything is kind of overwhelming and I really don't want to do it so sometimes it's the hardest thing is starting and then once I get started it's really not so bad you get a little bit of momentum you build a little bit of motivation after I did Alex's closet I was more motivated to do mine because it felt so good to do his and I knew that I wanted to have that good feeling in my closet as well so sometimes we just have to kind of trick ourselves put on some good music think some good thoughts and uh, get to work so here is kind of the disaster that I'm creating on my bed, trying to declutter my clothing. And it always gets worse before it gets better. But trust me, in a little bit, it will get better. And here on my vanity, it's just gonna be more decluttering and I'm gonna clean it out. I'm gonna go through everything that's in the little cabinet and the drawers. It's not too bad because I'll admit I don't have a ton of beauty products or makeup. That's really not the thing that I collect. Um, once we get to week four and we end up in the garage, you're gonna see where the problem lies. <laughs> so that is where I over collect things because that's where I store all of my home decor. And I'll admit, I have bought some home decor. And so it has cluttered up my garage and I just, I need to sort through all that and declutter it and organize it and clean it and things like that. So that is my sore spot. I think everybody has that one area where, you know, they tend to uh, enjoy, whether it's their hobby or if it's, you know, just an area where they really like to shop. Like some people have a lot of different bags. Some people have a ton of shoes ton of clothing, ton of makeup, you know, everybody's different in what they like to collect. And so I don't get a pat on the back just because I don't have a ton of makeup. It's just because I'm not that interested in it. But if I can manage to declutter my decor, then yes, I can have a pat on the back because that is a little bit harder for me to do because I pretty much like all of it. So here I'm just going to declutter my tiny little makeup um, organizer here. <laughs> not much but I will take out a couple of products that I'm not currently using let me know in the comments what's one area of your home that tends to build up a little quickly and you have to declutter it really regularly so it could be like your clothing or your makeup or it could be home decor like me just let me know what you like to collect that tends to need to be decluttered pretty often So this is what I ended up decluttering. I know it's not too much, but for me it felt really good to get rid of the things that I wasn't using. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this vanity and then I'm gonna put it back in my closet and I'm actually going to mount my vision board on top of this, um, just kind of like over the mirror part so that I can look at it every day and be inspired.
So here's what my closet looked like after I was all finished and I'm so happy with it. I think it looks really nice. It looks clean and calm. The most important thing is, is that even though it doesn't look a ton different from when I started, it is clean. And so I know that, and I know it's hard to see on camera like a huge difference between these before and afters, but it is so much cleaner and fresh in here and it just really needed it. So I'm very happy with the results and I'm back to loving using my closet because it just feels nice and clean in here. And hopefully I'll keep up with it and keep up the organizing and the cleaning. I love having my vision board up at the top. It just makes me so happy to look at all the things that I'm working on this year and all the ways that I want to grow and change and learn. And so that's been awesome as well. That's the thing I like about you. Mm. On the highway, it's our way. Route 66 and we keep on driving. We just do what we want to do. Yeah. Now moving on to my husband's closet, we have all the family photo albums at the top of his closet and it just looks very cluttered and it's just not organized. And then his clothes really aren't so bad. My husband is definitely not a hoarder of clothes. Um, so I will go through them, but I don't think I'm going to find a whole lot that he's not wearing. But I really wanted to get these photos down because I will keep the photo albums up here, but I'm actually going to move these little photo bins into the other room because I have a nice little cabinet that they can all go in that I've reserved for that and they're going to fit so nicely in there. And yes, I'm spilling everything out of the closet. It was all just like cascading on top of my head the whole time I was trying to work. So I could not catch a break. It was like every time I went in there, more things were falling on my head. So it was definitely overdue and it's a long time coming to clean the top of this closet. So I'm very, very glad that I was getting into it. Nothing's complicated. I had spent some time organizing these photos last year and it's also in a video but I kind of organized all of these photos that are already printed and I have these nice little five by seven organizers that I absolutely love uh, but they just don't belong in the top of my husband's closet there's really no room for them and so I have a cubby out in the dining room with some baskets in it and I plan on moving all of these items into those baskets so I'm gonna go ahead and take those out in just a second I'm decluttering them just in case because it has been a few months since I did this little project so I knew that there was probably a couple things that I could pull out and declutter even further and now I'm just gonna take them into the dining room put them away in the baskets and try to make some sense of these photo albums um, and then I'm going to clean out his closet before putting them back and now the photo albums are fitting so much nicer they're still filling up the whole entire top shelf but at least we made a little bit of progress by getting the photo bins down. So now I'm gonna take out all of his clothes and declutter what I can. I'm gonna get everything decluttered and then put back in the closet as nicely as I can and then we're gonna work on the bottom of the closet. I got a good look in his eyes I just knew that he was special He's 
So here again, following along on my checklist, I'm just gonna pull everything out and I'm gonna clean the baseboards, I'm gonna sweep and I'm going to clean the floors as well. And these shoes, I will go ahead and clean off as well as the shoe rack and we'll get everything put back in and get his closet all ready. And here is the black trash bag that I used to declutter all three closets today. So Alex's, mine, and Tony's. This is what we decluttered out of those closets. It was so heavy and I was so glad that somebody else would be able to use the things that we weren't using anymore. So I'm starting by just removing the glass globe off of this ceiling fixture and I'm just gonna go ahead and wash that with some dish soap. And then I'll also be doing the same thing to my over the sink light. Now when I do any kind of cleaning, especially deep cleaning, I always work my way from top to bottom. So and I'm sure many of you guys do too, and that way when the dirt and dust falls, it falls on the things that I have not cleaned yet. So that's how I've structured this checklist. I've tried to put everything in order of cleaning from top to bottom in each room that we clean. So you should be able to just follow it in order, and that should work for you. Now I wanted to say a quick disclaimer that I'm not a cleaning expert. So it's not really a how-to kind of cleaning channel. This is more like a cleaning motivation, encouragement channel. So I'm just a regular person cleaning my house. So I'm definitely not an expert in any sense of the word. And of course, by all means, just modify it to your space because everyone's space will be different and there will be different things to clean. Next on the checklist is to dust off the tops of the cabinets as well as the fridge. So I'm gonna use my little step ladder and work my way around the kitchen and just use a feather duster to kind of get things dusted off. As far as my deep cleaning, I really like to divide the house in half and clean half of it in the spring and half of it in the fall. And that way, within one year, my house is fully deep cleaned. Now, of course, some of the items on the checklist, I do have to clean more than twice a year, such as cleaning off the countertops and things like that. I added them to the checklist because if I'm gonna go in my kitchen and do all this deep cleaning, then I'm definitely gonna clean off my countertops. But that doesn't mean I only clean up my countertops, you know, for the deep clean. So um, some of these tasks I do only do twice a year, like pulling out the fridge and pulling out the oven and doing things like that. But other things I have to do more frequently um, such as dusting and things like that. So I just kind of wanted to explain that so that you kind of know how I clean my house and what my checklist was based off of. And let me know in the comments how you like to clean your home and what's been working for you. Now here I was raising up the blinds so that I could clean the window. And I did clean the window, but for some reason the footage did not come out. So I do apologize for that. But now I'm moving into the next item on my checklist, which is to declutter and clean the insides of the upper kitchen cabinets. I'm using the Everspring all-purpose cleaner in the lavender scent to clean the insides of the cabinets. And my kitchen cabinets were just really cluttered and kind of disorganized. And I'm still trying to find the best ways to organize these cabinets. But I honestly think that most of it is just maintenance. If it gets put away right, then it probably won't get all messed up to begin with. So I think I just need to take a little more time and instead of just shoving everything in the cabinet and running away, I probably need to take a second and put it where it actually belongs. So I just really wanted to work on really having homes for everything and making sure I knew what was going in each cabinet 
and then sticking to that so that I don't have just a catch-all cabinet. This cabinet in particular ends up being like a catch-all cabinet because I've got it dedicated for school work and receipts like you just saw there, the hair cutting kit to cut my husband's hair and my son's hair, and then all kinds of other paperwork that the kids bring home, as well as even this diffuser with my essential oils. So it really can be a little bit of a variety cabinet and I don't want it to get too out of control. So I'm gonna really try to work on putting everything in its place. Nothing's gonna hold us down. Yeah, we are taking off the ground now. Stay with me. We're now this cabinet is basically for glassware and it definitely gets out of hand. It all could fit in here so nicely if I just took the time to sort the lids to the mason jars and all of the containers. And if I just took an extra minute to put it away nicely, I know it can look really nice. So I'm gonna to try to work on that right now. So a lot of it is just habits of deciding where everything's gonna go and then putting it back right each time. And I'm sorry for some of the blurry shots. My camera was kind of misbehaving and the autofocus was just not very reliable, but I do try to work around it as best I can, but there was a couple times where I had to leave it blurry. So here I'm just sorting through all of the containers in case there was anything that didn't belong there. And then I'm just putting all the lids back on everything because I know it's going to go much more nicely in the cabinet once the lids are on. And while I'm loading back these cabinets and working on decluttering and cleaning out these upper cabinets, I just wanted to quickly talk about kind of the science or psychology around checklists because I was actually inspired to create my checklist when I saw a video on Matt Diavella's channel on productivity. He was speaking about how we think of checklists as such a basic thing, like just writing something on a piece of paper, but that for the human mind, they're actually brilliant because the checklist kind of relieves the mind of having to remember and that frees up so much mental space and really kind of prevents overwhelm. When people from NASA and the space mission were interviewed about how they were able to carry out these really complicated missions, they said that they weren't. They were just following their checklist. They didn't do one big thing. They did a thousand little things and so they were only focusing on the next thing on their checklist and that's all they were worried about and so it's not like they had to send a man to the moon it's that they just had to do the next thing on the checklist and that just made it so much more doable for them and it created more mental space for other things and it just makes the impossible possible Deep cleaning your kitchen might not be quite as complicated as sending a person to Mars but it still can be overwhelming and it still can be something where we just don't even know where to start because we're just overwhelmed by all the things we would need to do, especially when we include decluttering and organizing. So I have found that just sticking to my checklist and only worrying about doing the next thing really made it so much more doable and pleasurable and I was not overwhelmed at all. I just felt like, okay, I'm just moving on to the next thing. And when I completed one task, if I needed a break, I just went ahead and took a break. If it needed to continue on into the next day, that's fine too because I knew right where I left off because I had a checklist. So my next step right here is just to declutter all of these candles. I have way too many candles in this cabinet. I don't even have enough spaces in my house to put all these candles. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter these and get this cabinet back in shape and looking nice again and looking more decluttered and organized, hopefully. Carry on on your own. Ever since I got a good look in his eyes, I just knew that he was special. He said he wanna take it slow, but I couldn't help that I wanted to take it to the next level. Cause I wanted that great love, like standing in the middle of a bone fire. You don't know how you got there, but you hold tight. No. Okay, now that the candles are looking much, much better, I'm gonna go through these cookbooks real quick and recipe binders and just kind of declutter some of the loose paperwork that got thrown in there in haste. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and get them back into the cabinet as nicely as I can. I also wanted to let you guys know that this video will have two parts. So if I had just uploaded the whole entire week one for the Clean Your Way to Calm Challenge, it actually would have been like over an hour long. And I didn't want you guys to have to sit and watch something that long just to get a little cleaning motivation. So I divided it into two 30 minute videos, roughly 30 minutes. 
And so this will be part one and then you'll get part two in just a couple of days. I'm still gonna be putting it up right as you're getting started your challenge. And that way if you wanna use it for motivation or inspiration, it'll be ready for you. So one will be up on Friday and then the next one will be up on Monday, which is day one of our challenge. We're starting on February 1st. So you still have plenty of time to go get yourself a checklist and get cleaning with us. This cabinet is kind of for all things coffee and tea. So I like to keep my K cups in a little tray. So I'm gonna get those nice and organized. And then I have the tea just kind of all over the place in different boxes. So I definitely need to work on that and get them kind of sorted out in a little bit better way. I have one of these little longer trays that I can stack the tea bags in, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. And then when I filled that up, I actually went in my garage and found another one. So I went ahead and filled both of those up and I get these little organizers from Walmart. They come in a variety pack for I believe $6 and I think you get like 10 pieces or something like that. So they're very affordable and I kind of use them all over my house, but I liked how they worked for these tea bags and I just feel like it took up a lot less space and looked a lot better. I could stay forever. Now in this cabinet right here, I like to keep kitchen towels at the top and then I've got little things for our little two-year-old Alex. And he obviously doesn't wear bibs anymore, so I don't know why I even have those in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and move those to storage or donate them. And then I will adjust this little shelf so that I can use it in a little bit different way. So I'm just gonna store his plates and bowls in here as well as his little popcorn containers. And since this is where we keep our plates and glasses and bowls, none of it really needs to be decluttered, but I'm going to pull it all out and give the inside of this cabinet a really good cleaning. Make sure you stay tuned because the bulk of the work in this kitchen is still to come. I'm going to be pulling out my refrigerator and cleaning behind there, inside of it. I'm also going to be pulling out the oven and then cleaning behind there and also cleaning inside of the oven. And I've got a trick that I want to show you that worked beautifully for cleaning the oven racks. So stay tuned for that. Yes, it's been a while since I've cleaned the inside of this cabinet because there were actually dust bunnies in this cabinet. So I'm gonna go grab my handheld vacuum and get to work. This cabinet is right next to my stove because I cook a lot from this cabinet. I usually keep the baking things on the top and the cooking things on the bottom. And it's just like sauces and seasonings and things like that. So I'm gonna pull everything out and get this clean. This one tends to get pretty gross as well because you know sometimes the honey will leak or the soy sauce. And so I'm gonna go ahead and scrub this one out really well. And I don't have anything like amazing as far as organization for this cabinet yet. Maybe one day I'll go ahead and get some Lazy Susans or something that'll make it a little bit easier to see everything. But for now, I just wanted to make sure that it was deep cleaned and that everything went back in there nicely.
The very last upper cabinet that needs to be cleaned out is the one above the fridge. I don't actually keep anything in it right now, but I just wanted to get it clean. And then the next item on my checklist is to wash the cabinets. So I'm gonna use this Palm Olive Pure and Clear. If you have Dawn dish soap, that's pretty much the same thing. It's just, this is what I had on hand. And I'm gonna get a hot, soapy microfiber cloth, and I'm just going to clean my cabinets. So my cabinets are actually painted cabinets. I painted them last spring, and I made a whole entire video on it. So if anyone is interested in doing this project in their own kitchen, uh, my kitchen was kind of the more orangey tone cabinets, but they were in really good condition. And the orangey tone did not go with the rest of my house. As you can see, we have like the darker wood floors and darker furniture. And so I really needed to neutralize that orange tone, but the cabinets were in great shape. And so I was just really thinking that they would be good candidates to get painted. And I could not love them more. I absolutely love my white kitchen and the paint part is holding up beautifully. But as we all know, white cabinets show a lot of dirt and I know it's hard to see on camera, but my cabinets were filthy. So I was so glad to give them this good deep clean. And I get a lot of questions about my kitchen cabinet. So I always keep that video linked in my description box. So if you are kind of thinking about painting your kitchen white, even though it's a lot of work, I definitely recommend it. For this little accent cabinet, I'm just gonna pull everything out and I'm actually only gonna leave back the books because I kind of keep those up year round. But for the rest of my kitchen, I'm gonna be pulling down any kind of winter decor that I have out and just leaving up my year round staples. The next thing on my checklist was to pull out this fridge and clean really well behind it. And there was definitely a lot of dust bunnies and dirt and spilled things behind here. So it was a little bit of a mess. I'm showing you guys right here what it kind of looks like so you can get a little before and then we'll go ahead and do some work so that we can get a nice after shot. Now that the floor is clean behind the fridge, I wanna go ahead and clean the sides of the fridge while I have it pulled out. And then I'll go ahead and push it back into place and we will begin deep cleaning the inside of the refrigerator. So if you're following along on your checklist, you may have already just deep cleaned your refrigerator. So if so, you can go ahead and skip that part. I know that's something we definitely do more than once or twice a year. So if you've already done it, then you can go ahead and skip that part. For me, it has been a while and I had noticed that it was starting to look really gross in there. So I decided to add it on to this kitchen deep clean. And I'm pulling everything out and then I'm just going to wash all of the little shelves and compartments and containers with some warm soapy water. Somebody told me don't pretend Cause everyone can use a friend sometimes Take some good advice Don't let your fear decide That's how you break inside You don't need to worry Somebody is waiting down the line 
And I'm gonna leave my Instagram accounts right here for you guys if you wanna come give me a follow. I'm at Jenny Teal, that's my personal account. And my husband and I actually have a channel together called Jenny and Tony. And we share a lot more of our personal lives on that channel. And so I share some things on that Instagram. And then I also have an Instagram for this channel and it's called at underscore cleaning therapy. And I do give channel updates, sneak peeks, as well as motivation for you to continue on in your cleaning challenge. We're gonna be doing this spring cleaning challenge and then we're gonna be doing another one in the fall. So make sure you're following me over there for channel updates and lots of encouragement and motivation. Could I use a friend? I think cleaning inside of the refrigerator is probably my least favorite chore in the whole kitchen. I really didn't mind decluttering the cabinets, washing down the cabinets. I don't really mind sweeping and mopping. Um, I'm okay with doing dishes, they're not my favorite, but thankfully my daughter, uh, she's 15, and she does the dishes, that's her daily chore, and my 12-year-old son does the trash. And so I really don't have to do dishes too frequently, usually just when I'm filming, or if she's off and has plans, um, I'll do the dishes. So I don't mind that so much because I get a lot of breaks from it, but cleaning out the inside of the refrigerator has got to be probably my least favorite task for the kitchen, but let me know in the comments what your least favorite chore is. And for the inside of the refrigerator, I like to just spray it all down and clean it with this little combination of vinegar, Dawn dish soap, and water. And it's just a good way to kind of clean everything down. It's also food safe, so it kind of makes me feel confident that I'm not putting any chemicals right by my food. And so I really like to use this mixture, and the vinegar really does break down all of the stuck on food in the fridge and it's a, just an easy way to kind of get that to scrub off a little more easily. Lost in the shadows of a million stars Shouldn't they invite a mind near and far Shouldn't they at all just tell me where you are Send a prayer if I'm out of luck Send a little and now it's time to load everything back up into the fridge. And if you're in need of any fridge organizers or are interested in the way that I've organized the fridge, I did a video on that a little while back. And so I still have everything linked in my Amazon store. So if you go in my description box, you're gonna see a link that says shop my home. And it's just got some links for all the different products in my home. It's all organized by room and these little products will be in there as well. And they are affiliate links. So anytime you shop through those, you are definitely supporting my channel. So if you choose to do so, thank you very much. Halfway hard. Halfway And the next item on my checklist was to pull out this stove right here and clean real good behind it and then clean the inside of it as well. And so as you can see, it's kind of like the fridge. There's a lot of stuff behind there that falls between the cracks. So I'm gonna go ahead and sweep that up and clean off the floor and then I'll move on to the inside of the oven. Send a little love, I'll make it.
here's a little shot of what the inside of my oven looked like. It's a relatively new oven, so it's not quite as bad as my old oven used to get, but as you can see, there's still some stuck on food and it's really in need of a good cleaning. So I'm going to pull out the racks real quick and I was actually watching do it on a dime on YouTube and she had soaked her baking racks in the tub on top of a towel so it doesn't scratch the tub and she used about one cup of laundry detergent and then if you just let that soak it's much much easier to get all the stains off so these are supposed to soak for 30 minutes to one hour so while those were soaking I went into the kitchen and I made a little mixture of baking soda and water to clean the inside of the oven. Now this is how I used to clean my old oven and it really works very, very well. And if you let the baking soda kind of stay on there for a little while, I try to like cake it on really good and then just let it sit for a few minutes and go take a break. And then when I come back and scrub, it really does work. You still have to scrub. I mean, it's not like a miracle way to clean your oven. You still have to scrub but it is a very like chemical free natural alternative to cleaning your oven. And I have to say it works really well, but it takes a lot of elbow grease and it is extremely messy. So I almost feel like hesitant to recommend this method for you to clean your oven uh, because it is such a mess. It kind of becomes like dirty snow and it just kind of cakes all around and it gets in all the crevices. So you end up having to clean all that off. So it is a lot of work and it takes a long time to do it this way, but technically it does work. And speaking of what works, this method worked beautifully. I couldn't believe how easy it was to just get everything off once it had been soaking. If you're gonna do this method, I would definitely soak it for the full hour, not just 30 minutes because it definitely seems to make a difference, like even moving from the first rack to the second rack, the second rack was easier to scrub because it had been soaking for longer. So I really would recommend just leaving these for a while. And it really worked really well and I will definitely be using this method again in the future. And now that the baking soda had been sitting for quite a while, I was just kind of finishing scrubbing it out. I'm going in with a wet sponge and just trying to break up all of the baking soda. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go over this whole thing with the wet sponge and then I'm gonna dry it out with some paper towels and we will have a nice clean oven. So while I'm finishing up cleaning this oven, I'm gonna tell you about the Clean Your Way to Calm challenge and what we have in store for the next few weeks. So this is a four week challenge. It's gonna be taking up the month of February. So we'll have our checklist done by March 1st in order to put out spring decorations in case any of you guys like me like to decorate for spring. So for week one, we are here in the kitchen. Week two, we're gonna take care of all of our closets. Week three will be the bedrooms and week four will be the garage. So make sure you go in my description box and click the link to sign up to get your checklist so we can all clean together. Stay tuned for part two of this video, which will be coming out on Monday. And Monday is day one of our challenge. So I hope you guys are as excited as I am to get started. And here's what the inside of the oven looked like when I was all done. It was very clean and it really looked almost like new. So I was very excited that the baking soda did such a good job. And even though it was a lot of work and mess, it was definitely worth it. And today we are hopping right into week three of our cleaning challenge. And so we are focusing on the bedrooms. We're gonna be deep cleaning and decluttering our bedrooms. 
and I'm going to show you a couple of the bedrooms in my home just to give you guys some motivation to get your cleaning done. So if you need some motivation to do some deep cleaning or spring cleaning or any of other things on your to-do list, stay tuned because I've got you covered. Now I'm starting here in my daughter Noelle's room and I'm gonna start by just tidying everything up, getting everything put away so that I can focus on my checklist and get some deep cleaning done. And speaking of the checklist, if you still need one, it's definitely not too late. Just head over into my description box and you can click the link that says join the cleaning challenge. And that will take you to a little site where you'll put in your email address and then it'll automatically send you a cleaning checklist. So this is the first time that I'm doing a cleaning challenge like this on my channel. This is a new thing for me and it's something I'm kind of doing a trial run of this time. So others that are cleaning using this checklist, I'm trying to use the feedback to kind of make it better next time and to improve it for our next challenge. So if you wanna hop in and be a part of that trial run and feedback period, I would really appreciate it. And I already have some things that I know that I want to modify for it for next time, but we're still in the learning process, just figuring out how we can all clean together and encourage and motivate each other. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any videos in this series. This is a very motivating series. I've been enjoying it so much and I've loved getting a chance to clean along with you and to kind of hear about your progress and know how you guys are doing. And if you have pictures of your progress, your clean and calm spaces, go ahead and tag me on Instagram. I'm at underscore cleaning therapy. And here's my checklist right here. So I'm gonna get started now that the room is tidied up. I'm gonna start from top to bottom and start with cleaning these light fixtures and ceiling vents. Could you just shed a little light, shed a little light, shed a little light on me? Shed a little light, shed a little light, shed a little light on me. Why'd you go and leave me here all alone in the shadows? So I like to use a lint roller to do the lamp shades. I feel like that just does such a good job of getting all of the dust off of lampshades for ceiling lights as well as lamps. And to clean the wall hangings, which is my next step on my checklist, I'm gonna be using the Everspring glass cleaner and these microfiber cloths. Now, I absolutely love these microfiber cloths. I just got them recently off of Amazon and I've been using them for about probably a week or two weeks now and I love them. So I'll have them linked in my description box in case you're in the market for some cleaning cloths. I think they come in a 12 pack maybe or a 15 pack and they're very uh, affordable and I really enjoy them. So I'm gonna clean off all of these wall hangings. I'm moving my way from top to bottom and then I'll be moving on to the furniture. And hope is gone. No one knows what will become. I turn to you in a humble prayer. Can you hear my and if you're new to my channel today, I just want to briefly introduce myself officially. My name is Jenny and I'm a mom of three and I live down in the south in Louisiana. And on my channel, I love to do cleaning motivation as well as organizing, decluttering, home projects, anything that would help you to create a clean and calm space for yourself and for your family. But I also love to make my videos relaxing because I honestly think that cleaning is therapeutic, but I also think sometimes watching cleaning videos is therapeutic. I think we all get great ideas from each other and it's just a relaxing way to see before and afters and to get the motivation to accomplish that in your own home. So I'm a huge fan of cleaning videos and I love to try to make my videos nice and relaxing for you guys so that you can unwind after a busy week or just get some great ideas for your next project. So here I am just cleaning off these little string lights that my daughter has behind her bed. They get so dusty and I had been seeing that for a while now and so I'm really glad to be cleaning them. Let me know in the comments if you've started any of your spring cleaning yet or deep cleaning projects or just whatever you're working on right now. You could be in the middle of spring decorating. Let me know what you're up to. Can you wash away?
So as you can see, next on my checklist was to dust the blinds and window coverings and clean the windows and ledges. So I'm gonna handle that really quickly. I'm continuing on with my Everspring glass cleaner and the microfiber cloth. But then next up is to declutter the insides of the furniture before we clean it. And I'm gonna show you right here all the work that my daughter has done so far decluttering her desk. So she has all of her art supplies and paint supplies really nicely organized. And this drawer still needs to be done, so she's in the middle of working on that. And then moving on to her dresser, she has her little gaming cabinet all decluttered and organized as well as inside of her dresser. We've actually started decluttering all of her clothes, but we still have to put some organizers in there just to kind of keep them nice. So I'm gonna probably get the same organizers that I have in my son's room because those work really well. So I'm just kind of showing you a little bit of the project she's been working on. She's 15 and we love to teach our kids how to do these things themselves. So, you know, I am coming in here and uh, cleaning this just to film it and give you guys motivation, but some of the behind the scenes work um, they are working on. So my 15 year old daughter and my 12 year old son have been working on decluttering their rooms and organizing their rooms because I really think it's just important to teach them how to do that. Um, I don't want them to be overwhelmed by projects like this. I want them to understand that, you know, they can set their mind to it and tackle it and get it done and learn how to create that clean and calm space for themselves. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that they love their privacy and they don't wanna be on camera, and I've always respected that. But next I'll be moving into my two-year-old son's room and I'll be decluttering his furniture. So stay tuned for that. But I'm just gonna continue wiping down this furniture, getting it really nice and clean before I pull it away from the walls so that I can clean all the baseboards and the floors underneath. So I can give you shelter But am I a part of your goals? Maybe none of it matters Cause I don't want to let go I never meant to break a promise I never meant to run away But you know how So while I'm finishing this part up, I do want to kind of go over some of the ideas I had about modifying the checklist and see if I could get your input. So what I love about the checklist is I love having everything laid out in order of the things that I need to clean and it kind of keeps it from floating all around in my mind. It's off of my mind. I can just look at the checklist and see what needs to be done next. And there is sort of a satisfaction of, you know, checking things off and knowing that you're getting farther and farther along on your list. It's just a really good feeling to make your way down a checklist. So I'm loving that part. What I'm not loving so much is the concentration of work all within one week and one month. It does feel like a bit much, um, especially since when I'm cleaning, I'm also filming, so it's probably taking me twice as long as it normally would. And then it made me think of some of you guys out there who are working full-time jobs or part-time jobs, or you may have lots of young children and the struggle that you would encounter to try to get that done in that time period and how difficult that might feel. So moving forward, at the very least, I'm gonna be stretching out some of these deep cleaning tasks to make them a little more manageable. But let me know in the comments what suggestions you have. I would love for you guys to give me whatever feedback you have. And I know that whatever we land on together is gonna be awesome. And I know that we're gonna get a lot done. We're gonna have fun doing it together. And we're gonna give each other lots of inspiration. So thank you for any help or feedback you end up giving me. I just love you guys so much and I'm so glad we're on this journey together. Y'all make this so fun. I see times a thousand in you I'm 
I'm going to go in with the Method Squirt and Mop in the Almond Scent and mop the floors underneath the furniture. I've already taken the hot soapy rag and cleaned the wainscoting and the baseboards and now I'm also going to use that to clean this fiddle leaf fig. It's full of dust and then I'm going to move on and just remove her desk as well and mop under there and wash the baseboards as well behind there and everything was just really dusty. I know it's hard to see on camera but it had been a while and so I was getting a lot of dust and dirt off of these floors and the baseboards. So that was a really good feeling and I was very glad to get in here and do this today. Weeks and months and years they pass and I knew it wouldn't last when tears dream down my face my mama said all the nights that end in heartbreak gonna pay off someday and the pain that you're feeling gradually fades away cause growing up falling in love giving your all might not be enough just Next up on the list is to clean the doors and the light switches. So I'm just using that hot soapy rag to continue doing that. I just find it works so well and gets the dust off so well. So next we're gonna move on to the bedding. We're gonna wash all of the bedding and I'm also gonna rotate and freshen up her mattress. Noelle is actually getting a new bed and a new bedspread and it's all coming very shortly. I ordered it off of Amazon and she is just so tall. So she's 15 and she's now taller than me and I'm 5'8". So I know she's at least 5'9", maybe 5'9 and a half. And so this little twin bed is just not long enough for her anymore. And it's pretty new because we had bought this bed last year when we redid her room so we're actually gonna keep it and pass it on to the baby for him to use and here I'm just using some baking soda and some lavender essential oils and I'm just shaking that up and spreading that all over her mattress and I'm gonna let that sit for a while while all of her bedding washes and probably a couple of hours is what I waited and then I'm vacuuming it off with my little handheld vacuum this is a shark and I'll have that linked in my description box just like And now that the mattress is clean, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the bed frame and then I'll pull the bed out and clean behind the bed and underneath and get that floor swept and mopped. Now by this time the bedding had come out of the dryer and so it was time to get all that back on and go ahead and give the room one final sweep and mop in all the places that haven't gotten swept and mopped yet and then we'll go ahead and see how her room came out and then we'll be moving on to my son Alex's room. Now we don't do closets in this video because that was on a separate week for our cleaning checklist. So we're just focusing on the room itself. But I was really happy with the way her room came out and everything just turned out really pretty and clean and calm. So stay tuned because we're about to see the reveal on this room and then we'll move on into the next one. We were gonna make it. He promised we would find the time.
Now here in Alex's room, as you can see, there's not much mess in here, thankfully, so I don't have much tidying up to do. So I'll be focusing on my deep cleaning. We do have some more crayon marks and pen marks on the walls, so I'll be focusing on that as well. And I'm just gonna go back to my checklist and start right back up at the beginning, which is to clean from top to bottom. So I'm gonna start by cleaning his light fixture and his ceiling vent, and then I'll move on to the walls. And I'm going in with this magic eraser. I love to use these on the walls, especially for marks on the walls, crayon, pen. It just works really well. And you guys have seen me pull this out several times during this cleaning challenge because my walls have not been in the best of shape lately. So I'm just taking this time to tend to them and get them in good shape moving forward. Finishing up here, cleaning the walls. This little bookshelf I have hung under the window, so I kind of consider that a wall item. And so I'm just dusting that off really good and cleaning off the books before I put them back. We have this hung lower so that Alex can reach it and go grab himself a book. And he does have some marker, I think, scribbled on one of the books, so I'm going to put the magic eraser to the test again and see if it'll get those marks out. Thankfully it did, so his books are now clean again and all nicely back on his shelf. Moving on to his dresser, I'm gonna take a few things out, do a little bit of decluttering, figure out what we don't use anymore, what we don't need, but I'm really just gonna give these drawers a really good cleaning. Um, they're not terribly cluttered or anything because, I mean, he's only two, so he hasn't accumulated a ton of possessions yet uh, that would need to be decluttered. So thankfully, it's a pretty light job, and I mostly just wanna get everything deep cleaned and pull out the few things that he's not using. I feel like the vast majority of the decluttering that we did in Alex's room was in his closet. So I had so much in his closet and it had really gotten out of control. So if you missed that video, make sure you go back and see week two, which was closets. And you can see me declutter his closet and we got rid of so much stuff. So that was a really good feeling. Let me know if you've been working on any decluttering projects. Like when do you guys do your decluttering? Do you like to do that more at the beginning of the year or with spring cleaning? Or do you do it before the holidays, before the kids get presents? Um, how do you declutter? When do you declutter? And what are you guys working on right now? Let me know. Now that the inside of the drawers are decluttered and cleaned, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the outside of the furniture and I'm gonna pull it away from the wall and do the same thing I did in Noelle's room and get all of the baseboards cleaned and the floor cleaned underneath. Today was a bittersweet day because Alex started his very first little school program. It's really just Mother's Day out, 
but it's his first time being away from home during the day. The only other time he's been out is to go to church and he goes in the little nursery and plays with his friends and he loves that. He does very well there, but that's only once a week for like an hour and this is the first time we're sending him to a little Mother's Day Out program. It's a couple times a week and he takes a lunch and his nap mat and he's just learning and playing and it's exciting for us because he's growing up and doing something new but it's always kind of strange in the beginning getting used to something like that because he's just here with me all day long and the house just feels really quiet and I'm like waiting to hear him do something or get up to something and I have to respond and I keep forgetting that he's not in his room napping but that he's actually at school and so it's definitely going to be an adjustment to go from total stay-at-home mom with Alex to having him gone a couple times a week and I'm definitely going to have to get used to that but I know it'll be good for both of us because it's good for me to kind of get some things done and have a little time to myself to de-stress and it's also great for him to go and make friends and have a new environment to be in and learn how to socialize so it's definitely a great step but i'm definitely still getting used to it So while I'm finishing up here cleaning off the doors and light switches, I just wanted to take a second to address these freezing cold temperatures. How are you guys doing? Um, wherever you live in the country, let me know in the comments where you're from and what the temperatures are like right now. Because I know here in Louisiana, we are not used to severe winters at all. We're used to very, very mild winters and you know 50 degrees is cold for us and so the way it's been lately it's been so much colder than that and i know many of you guys who live in other parts of the country are experiencing below freezing temperatures and some serious situations so let me know how you're making out and if you're okay and then also where you're from and what the temperatures are i for one am just looking forward even more to spring now because I'm ready for a little bit of sunshine. I'm ready to be able to take Alex to the playground. I'm ready for some spring decor. It just makes me ready for all of it. Let me know how you're doing with all of that. Alex's area rug I'm gonna vacuum it first just to get off all of the dust and dirt and then I'm gonna sprinkle it with that same baking soda mixture that you saw me use on Noelle's mattress and then I'll go back in with the shark one more time and vacuum it again but I'm gonna let this sit on here for a couple of hours while his bedding is still finishing up being washed and by the time that's done that should be good it should be nice and fresh the days pass, the story began. Pushed and pulled until they. As I get all the bedding put back on the bed, I just want to thank you so much for taking some time to stop by my channel and hang out with me today. I'm really glad that I got all of this cleaning done. It's a great feeling. Alex's room is now clean and calm. 
as well as Noel's room. So thank you so much for being with me today. And if you still need the checklist, don't forget to go in my description box and grab one for yourself. It's free, it's printable, and I hope that it helps you with your cleaning this spring. Here is a good before shot of my cleaning closet and what it's been looking like. So as you can see, it's just this little hot mess of cleaning products and tools just kind of thrown in here. And there's also a lot of crumbs on the floor. I believe it was from one of my kids maybe cleaning up a spill and then maybe forgot to dump out the dustpan. I'm really not sure. So here is what it actually looks like. This is a real life moment. So up here I do have a white bin for clean microfiber cloths and the gray bin for dirty. So I think I'll go ahead and keep that system because it works really well for me. But step one is always just to remove everything from the closet. That's how I like to work with a clean slate so that I can know exactly what my next step is. And filming closets on YouTube is notoriously difficult. It's just really hard with the lack of lighting and it's such a small space to get the camera in there and get some good angles. So thank you for your patience as I try to put the camera in the best places possible, but it's a little bit of a challenge on videos like this. So now that I've got everything out of the closet, you can see it all here in my hall. I've got everything just kind of staged um, while I deep clean the closet. So I'm just starting with a hot soapy rag and I just put a little bit of Dawn dish soap on there. That's just kind of like how I like to deep clean and it just gets rid of all the dust very well. And like I've mentioned before, I live in Louisiana and it's so humid here and so sometimes the dust just sticks to everything. And I find that this method just works really well and it's very simple. And I'm just working my way from top to bottom following along on my checklist. And once I'm finished deep cleaning, I'll be able to declutter and organize some of the things in this closet. And you're going to want to stay tuned because this was such a fun little project and I couldn't be more happy with the results. It came out so pretty and it's so organized and the greatest thing is that it's totally functional. I didn't want to just create a pretty space but then have it not be functional. I wanted both and sometimes I want to have my cake and eat it too and this closet was definitely a good example of how it is very functional but still aesthetically pleasing. So stay tuned for the reveal. Up the pieces, hey, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. And I think it's time to retire my broom and dustpan. You guys have seen me use this the whole time on my channel, and I've actually had it for about three years now, so it's definitely served its purpose, but a few of the pieces have broken off, including the top, which is where you hang it, and I really like to hang my broom, and since that's cracked off, and since it's getting frayed and overused, I decided to go ahead and replace it. So this is what I like to look at when I'm deep cleaning and decluttering and making over a space is what's in good shape, what's not in good shape, what needs to be replaced. And if we get our eyes on it from time to time, we can keep up with these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace these. I actually purchased a broom and a dustpan from the at-home store. So I'll be using those in the closet. The rest I'm gonna keep and just declutter what's trashed or I'm not using, but as far as larger cleaning supplies, I'm keeping everything else. I wish I had a little more time with you, baby. Time to figure out what this could be. I dreamt of a life in a small town that wasn't enough for you somehow. I just wish I and if you're new to my channel today, welcome. Again, my name is Jenny, and I'm so glad that you found my channel. Right now, we are in the middle of a little Clean Your Way to Calm challenge where we are doing some decluttering and deep cleaning and organizing in our homes. And this little project was back from week three when we were working on our closets and I managed to do some of my closets, but then the whole family got sick and I wasn't able to finish my cleaning closet. So I'm playing catch up a little bit from week three and I like to give you guys all the motivation while we're doing our challenge so that we can clean our way to calm together. If you want to join in and you need a checklist, you can check my description box and I've got a join the challenge link and it's completely free and it's just a printable cleaning checklist that kind of takes you down the list of 
the order of operations for cleaning pretty much any space in your house. And of course, since all of our homes are different and we live in different places in the country and the world, you can just modify it to suit your needs. But it's a good starting point to give you just a basic idea of what might need to be cleaned and in what order you might want to clean it. I always like to clean from top to bottom. So I hope that that list is helpful for you and you can join it anytime. You'll never be behind because we're going to be doing a little bit each month throughout the year and then we'll just start right back up again next year. So you'll never be behind. You'll just clean along with us and we'll just keep going and we'll keep our homes nice and decluttered and deep cleaned throughout the year. I am loving these little mint organizers from Target. They are so pretty and I just love the color and I love how they fit the little Walmart organizers that I like to get right inside. No matter how I fiddled around with it, they seem to fit all kinds of different ways. So I just picked the way that was best for the cleaning products that I wanted to store. And then in this other one, I've just got more of the toxic products that I want really up high so that my two and a half year old doesn't get anywhere near them. The more natural products that I like to get from the Grove Collaborative, like such as the plant-based products, like the Method and the Mrs. Myers and the Everspring, those products I'm gonna go ahead and and store more inside the door and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that in just a little bit but overall my cleaning closet does have a lock on it and that's what we keep locked so that Alex doesn't get into any of the things when someone's not looking and here is just a little bag that keeps all of my shark vacuum attachments so I'm just putting everything back in there and then I'm gonna to try to make sense of some of these other products as well and check my description box for any links that you might want. I'm going to try to link everything that I can that you see in this video. I'm going to link all of my cleaning tools like this O Cedar Spin Mop and my Light and Easy Steam Mop. I'm also going to link the organizers that I can find as well as the over the door organizer that I end up using for all of my Grove products. And so just check my description box if you're looking for any links. I'm going to try to link everything separately to make it easier on you guys uh, to find what you're looking for. And now that I've got most of that decluttered and organized, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of it back up in the closet just to give me a little more space to work because I still need to go through some of those other cleaning products and I still have to clean off a couple of my mops. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these back up in the closet and then I'm gonna be cleaning off the door so that I can get the door organizer on here and get some of those products back in here and looking nicely again. My main goal for this closet was just to get as much as I could off of the floor. All of that stuff on the floor was what was keeping the closet so messy all the time because I would try to put it nicely, but then it would get knocked over when people went in there to get cleaning products and brooms and vacuums and things like that. So it would kind of get kicked around. And so my main goal was just to try to get everything as much as I could off the floor. And the solution that I ended up going with was this over the door organizer, which is actually made for pantries, but I figured it would work really well for my cleaning products as well. And it comes with six shelves but I'm only using four because that's all I needed but I'll save the other shelves just in case I change my mind because they're very easy to adjust. So I'll have this linked in my description box if you guys wanna try it out. It's from Amazon and it's very affordable. I think it was $30 and you get, like I said, six shelves, but I only put four of them up because the spacing worked out really well for me that way with the cleaning products. So this was a good way for me to get everything off of the floor and be able to see it at eye level and not have to keep stooping down to get all my cleaning products. They are now just easily within my reach. This last shelf was a little too close to the door handle, so I ended up moving it down one notch. 
and everything fit really well after that. And as you can see, this thing holds a ton of cleaning products. So I know that I'll always have plenty enough room for any cleaning products I want for seasonal needs or just changing it up or just wanting to experience a different scent. There is plenty of room in here. You can fit a ton of cleaning products in here. And the reason I love to have all of these cleaning products is because it just makes cleaning fun. I don't like to dread cleaning. I don't like to think that it's just a waste of my time or it's boring or it's something I dread. I actually like to have fun with cleaning and try to make it kind of like therapeutic and aromatherapy is a really fun way to kind of make cleaning more relaxing and enjoyable. And so I love to try to find scents that just smell really nicely and are more fun to use and I like to collect them. And so this is my little arsenal and when I like to clean, it just makes cleaning a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments what makes cleaning fun for you. It might be just certain kinds of music that you like to listen to or certain kind of products that you enjoy using or it could be a podcast or audiobook. Let me know in the comments how you make cleaning fun. And again, with the goal of trying to keep the floors as cleared off as possible, I'm hanging this light and easy steam mop as well as any other thing that I can hang. And then the larger vacuums are just going in the corner as well as the ironing board. So this is how it all turned out. I'm really happy with it. And like I said, I feel like it's both functional and pretty to look at. So everything here is things that I'm using and that I need on a regular basis and that I like to keep around and it makes cleaning both effective and enjoyable. And so this is the little clean floor that I was able to accomplish. That middle section is finally cleared off. So when people go in and out to grab things out of this closet, hopefully they'll have a little bit of floor space to step in without kicking around all of the cleaning products. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I couldn't be more satisfied with it. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I hope it just gave you all of the motivation that you need to tackle your next project. Don't forget to visit my description box to click on any of the links of the products I used on this video, as well as to join the Clean Your Way to Calm Challenge and get your free printable checklist. Hey friends, and welcome back to Cleaning Therapy. My name is Jenny, and today is a really fun video because we are going off of our checklist and we're gonna get some things done. And I'm so happy about this because you guys love these videos. If I look at my analytics, these checklist videos are like above and beyond any of my other videos. You guys love them, you watch them for longer and they seem to motivate you. So that makes me happy because I only wanna put out videos that you guys truly love and enjoy. So plenty of motivation in this one. We're gonna be going off of our checklist and I will be deep cleaning my bedroom. And I mean deep cleaning like top to bottom Bottom, every nook and cranny and it's just gonna feel so good to get that done so if you're following along with me and cleaning with me and are working off of your checklist thank you so much that motivates me so much that we get to clean together and if you still need one just go ahead and check my description box I have a link that says join the clean your way to calm challenge and you can get your checklist there so that we can clean together but right now you're just gonna see me do my morning cleaning routine because I don't wanna start a project until I've done just my basic cleaning for the day. This only takes me about 15 minutes and I just like to do a few things in the morning to kind of set myself up for a good day. The first thing I like to do is just tidy up the house. Then I like to get breakfast stuff cleaned up and get the dishwasher unloaded from the night before. And I start a load of laundry and normally I make my bed, but today since I'll be working in my bedroom, I'm not gonna be doing that. So thank you for being here. Go ahead and hit that like button if you're ready for some serious motivation and let's get into it. If you're new here today, I'd love to introduce myself. My name is Jenny and I'm a mom to three. I live over here in Southern Louisiana and I love to do cleaning motivation on my channel as well as decluttering and organizing, decorating, anything you name it for taking care of the home and creating a clean and calm space for myself and my family. I love to offer that kind of motivation here on my channel. I love to use cleaning as anxiety management, depression management, just mental health management in general. So if that sounds good to you, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can see me on the next video. I have a real heart for 
helping to encourage and motivate others and that is the whole purpose of my channel. So I'd love for you to stick around so that we can get to know each other a little better. So here's a little peek at my checklist today. This is what we're gonna be working on in the month of April. We're gonna be deep cleaning, decluttering, organizing, and just getting our bedrooms in order from top to bottom. So here's a close-up shot of my light fixture. There's some cobwebs here and a lot of dust, so I really need to get this deep cleaned. So again, working on my checklist from top to bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and get started cleaning. And as you can see, when I pull this little cover off, there's just a lot of dust on here as well. So for one side, I like to use just a wet uh, soapy washcloth and just get all of that off of the hard plastic side. And then for the fabric side, I always like to use this lint roller. I find that does a really nice job for anything fabric covered, including lampshades. Next on my checklist is to dust all of the wall hangings as well as the blinds and the windows. And for that, I'm gonna be using the Mrs. Meyers All-Purpose Spray in the Peony scent. I think it smells really good and fresh for spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off these wall hangings with that. For the blinds, I'm gonna go ahead and use my feather duster first just to get all of the dust off. And then I'll go in with the All-Purpose Spray and get them nice and clean. And I'm just going in with this method glass cleaner to get these windows. And I do have a different day um, allocated for the outside windows. So I'll just be doing inside of my bedroom today. So again, just following along on my checklist. Um, if you're new to my channel and you don't know what I'm talking about with the checklist, it's basically just something I came up with to make life easier because I was overwhelmed with spring cleaning and trying to cram everything into a week or two of the year. So I decided to break it up and have certain deep cleaning tasks each month and that way it would feel more manageable. And I decided to go ahead and just pipe it up and make it available to my viewers as well in case you guys wanted to join me and clean along with me. And of course you can just modify it to your own space and your own needs. So that's the checklist. And so I always keep it in my description box every single video in case you guys wanna join along. And here I am just rotating this mattress. This is a king size mattress and so it was kind of hard to rotate, but I did manage to get it done. Trapped in a box, trying to be like the rest, but I'm not. I just want to go my own way. This is a mixture of baking soda and lavender essential oils that I like to mix up and sprinkle on my mattress. I wanna let it sit for a good long while and I like to also take a little brush and just brush it into the mattress so that it can really do its job to pull out what it needs to pull out to freshen up the mattress. So I'm gonna let that sit for pretty much the rest of the time I'm cleaning in here and then I'll go ahead and vacuum it off. This headboard is all stained up. I think just because when you sit up in bed to read or anything, like the oils from your hair just get on this fabric. And so I had tried to clean it before and I accidentally used a bleach product and it left these like white streaks in here, which makes the other parts kind of look worse. So I'm going in with the Resolve Pet Expert upholstery cleaner just to see if I can make any progress with this headboard and we'll see if I can get it to look a little bit better. But make sure you stay tuned because I had no idea that when I moved this bed out of the way to clean it, it would be so filthy underneath. It was just blowing my mind uh, how much 
dust and all kinds of random things were under my bed. So here you can see there's a sippy cup of football, toys, um, and lots and lots of dust bunnies. This right here, this white streak, ended up being a spilled milk bottle from when my son was a baby. So it was very um, like jarring to see like how bad this was and that we've been sleeping on top of this for so long. And I really had no idea it had gotten this bad. I don't think I've cleaned under this bed, to be honest, um, since we got our bed, and that was several years ago. So it was just time, and that is another reason why I started the checklist, is just to keep myself accountable, because honestly, I forget, and you know, I fall behind in my cleaning, and there's just so many other things that I'm thinking about, and I just simply forgot to do this, neglected to do this, um, you know, and it just didn't get done. So this is just real life moment here. And um, that's what that checklist is for because it will remind me each month what I need to be doing. Because I guarantee you, when I go to clean this again next year, it's not gonna be this bad because it would take many years for it to get this bad. Also, whenever you're deep cleaning, just make sure you're cleaning the cords because they get so, so dusty. Even if it's just been a few months since you've cleaned them, I know the cords tend to get really dusty. So I'm just going over them with a wet washcloth. If I should fall, just go ahead, come and catch me, baby. And thankfully this uh, spilled bottle was really easy to clean up. I was a little bit worried that it would be like sticking to the floor, but thankfully it was a formula bottle and so it had turned into like a powder and it just wiped right off like as if it was dust. So I am so glad to get this area all cleaned up. That really grossed me out. And now I can just give it a really good mop and know that underneath my bed um, it's not, you know, the funk of a thousand years living there and I can just sleep a little more peacefully. So now that I've got the bed moved back over to the right, this is kind of what was left um, on the left. So I am just going to get this all cleaned up before I put that nightstand back. Let me know in the comments if you guys have done your spring cleaning or any deep cleaning that you might be working on, or if you're going through the checklist with me, let me know that as well. That always encourages me to know that I'm cleaning with a friend. And I hope that you guys feel like when you're watching my videos, you're cleaning with a friend too, because that is definitely one of the reasons I'm here is to make you feel like you're not alone and that you can do this. So here's another shot of just the baseboards and how dusty they have gotten. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and tackle these baseboards again with a warm, wet, and soapy washcloth. Next up on my checklist is to declutter and organize the tops and insides of the furniture. This is my husband's nightstand and it's pretty jam packed. And I don't think he really uses um, any of this pretty much, maybe like three things. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this. I'm gonna keep it all for now. I'm not gonna throw anything away because I wanna have him go through it and make sure that I'm not throwing away anything important. But I am gonna go ahead and make those decisions um, normally I don't declutter for other people, but it is my husband and he is extremely easygoing um, when it comes to things like this and he would appreciate this more than you know, so he's overwhelmed by the clutter as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do it, but like I said, I won't throw anything away just in case he needs to keep anything. So I'm going to vacuum this out and this is just kind of how I sort through things. I just make piles really quickly and I do a keep pile, a donate pile, and a trash pile. And I also do a pile for anything that just belongs somewhere else in the house. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. Should 
told you that you're beautiful, but the days pass and now it's so long ago. Did you make it? Did you break free? Did you manage to be who you wanna be? Maybe somewhere you think about me too. Here's a fun find. Inside of his dresser, I found Relaxing Clean With Me, which was my very first cleaning video. This is the notes that I took for the voiceover. And so that was a really cool find. And I think I might actually keep that as a little memento for my channel. And here's our little two-year-old Alex. All the change that I found in daddy's nightstand, I let him put into his little piggy bank. And he absolutely loves to do that. It makes him very happy. So I was glad we could feed the piggy. I'm growing old, but I need you to deal with my sorrow. Just a memory, just a broken frame, and I know that I have no one else to blame. Did you make it? Did you break free? Did you manage to be who you wanna be? Maybe somewhere you think about me too. So here's how it turned out. In the top, I just have his little accessories. And then in the middle of the drawer, he has his little personal care items, bathing cloths, and like a strap for when he goes in the shower. And then in the bottom drawer is just his t-shirts and socks. So I really like the way that came out. I think it's super minimal and functional. And then up here, I don't really have to declutter anything because all it is is a picture, his cologne, and his lamp. So I'm just gonna give it a really good deep cleaning. And whenever I clean the lamps, I always, again, try to clean the cords as well as the light bulbs. The light bulbs get really, really dusty. So I'm gonna clean that and then I'll pull out my lint roller for the shade. Another place that gets really, really dusty is the back of the furniture, and sometimes I forget to go clean that. It certainly doesn't get clean during my weekly cleaning, that's for sure. So this was all of the dust and like cobwebs that were kind of stuck up underneath and on the back of the furniture. So I made sure to do that with all the pieces um, in my room today because they had all been neglected for a while. As you can see here, a lot of these furniture pieces are pretty beat up and the finish is wearing off, but they are, overall in good condition they're real wood pieces so i am going to be keeping them and attempting to restore them soon probably in the next few months i will go ahead and paint this furniture and put a good seal on it just to kind of protect it we've had it for so many years and it's just really taken a beating but i really would like to save it and see if i can maybe paint it and give it a little bit of new life Here in these drawers, I had just been kind of dumping sentimental items in here. Anything the kids had been doing, like birthday cards that they got for me, or like Alex's doctor's checkups from when he was a baby with all of his like height and weight and things like that. Um, as well as like cards from friends and you know, 
artwork that the kids did and things like that. So I had just been kind of dumping it in here just because I didn't have anything in these drawers, but I now have um, a location for those kinds of items. So I decided to move them over to that location and these drawers just ended up being empty. And at first I was like trying to think of a way that I could fill them up but it's really not necessary. I'm sure something will come up that I can store in these drawers and I don't wanna just put things in here just to put things in here. Um, if they're empty, they're empty and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm sure that they'll, you know, come in handy at some point. I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive. Over here in the dresser, um, my husband and I share this dresser and so my side is the left side and his is the right. This is where I put my jewelry and I didn't have a ton to declutter from here because I don't really wear a ton of jewelry. So I'm just kind of pulling everything out that I know I haven't worn in the past year. And then I'm just taking things out of these little cubbies and just giving them a quick clean with a baby wipe just to kind of get any dust that might be in there. So here in this next drawer, I keep all of my bras and underwear and socks. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those because I already know I have way too many sports bras um, here in the front. Uh, I have way more sports bras than regular bras and some of my regular bras are in the laundry. So I just wanted to kind of even that out a bit. So I decluttered a little bit from there. I also decluttered some socks because I have like 20 something pairs of socks and there's only seven days in a week. So I am going to work on that for a little bit, but overall I'm going to leave this little system the same since I've been enjoying it. The next drawer is a drawer that I had some loungewear in, but um, I actually want to go ahead and put some organizers in here. Um, I got the same ones that I have in my son Alex's room because I love the way that they work and here they are right here. So I went ahead and got some for our drawers as well. I think they look really nice because they kind of match the inside of the drawer and they're very like sturdy and well made. So I now can fit like way more in here than before. So I went ahead and added my workout pants. These are just like little leggings, you know, I'm gonna put those um, in here as well. So I'll do workout clothes and loungewear all in this drawer. The reason I like dividers like this is because without them, I feel like when you fold up the clothes and try to file them, they just kind of fall all over the place. They don't really stay in place. And so I feel like with these organizers, you can get them to pack tightly enough to where they're not just falling over. So I really like these. And again, I had them in my son's room and they've been working really well. So eventually I'm gonna be getting these for all of our drawers. And I'll go ahead and leave the link to these as well in my description box in case any of you guys are looking for something like this. And I'm also decluttering these clothes while I'm folding them, which is why you see me throwing some to the side. So I was really happy with the way that drawer turned out and then in this bottom drawer I have all of my pajamas so I'll just go ahead and place the dividers in declutter and put back my pajamas as well and on my husband's side I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing this is all on the checklist and if we do this once a year I'm hoping that we won't have anything too crazy or overwhelming to deal with so that is the goal is to have like a maintenance cleaning routine instead of 
the way that I'm doing it, which is like, it hasn't been done in years and it's just a lot, a lot of work. I'm hoping that when I do this each year, it's just a matter of small tweaks and some cleaning. So we'll see how that goes. When I come back, you feed it up the south. My husband doesn't have too much in here, so this little first drawer won't be a problem at all. Um, in the middle and bottom drawers, I decided to switch around a few things for him, and I'm gonna put all of his t-shirts in the middle drawer and all of his pants and bottoms and shorts in the bottom drawer. And that's just to kind of free up a little bit of space in his closet. My husband has the smallest closet out of everyone, and so um, he just needed a little more room in his closet for like all of his work clothes and things like that. And right here in this um, top big drawer, he just has his socks and underwear and some, I think a tie, but that's working really well. So I'm gonna leave that be and I'll just focus on the middle and the bottom drawers. And this is just a little fun t-shirt that I got him for Christmas. I think it is completely appropriate for the relationship that we have. It says, I have a very psychotic wife. Um, and it's got like hot, you know, in bold so that it's like, it looks like it says hot wife, but it's really psychotic. And I'm really trying to get him to wear that for one of our videos for our channel. We have a little couples channel called Jenny and Tony, and I keep that link in my description box as well if you want to check it out. But I've been trying to get him to wear it for one of our videos, and he will not do it. He will only wear it basically to bed. I'm gonna be myself. And again, here's just more dust behind the dresser, just lots and lots of dust. So I'm gonna go ahead and sweep that out and wipe off the cords and get the baseboard all cleaned off as well. It's just what I do when I'm out, so try not to hold me down, feel alive. And again, there's just so much dust on the back of the furniture and it kind of clings to the bottom um, back of the furniture that I was really glad to get back here and really uh, tackle that. Um, as you can see, there was just a lot of dust coming off. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I am using the method wood for good to clean off my wood furniture. And I just think it works really well. It uh, conditions the wood, brings back the shine, and you know, it dusts everything off. And then it just smells so good. It smells like almond. And so um, my whole room was starting to just smell like this almond scent and it smelled really, really nice. And I was so glad to be uh, making all this progress today. And as soon as my bedding comes out of the dryer, 
I'll get my mattress all vacuumed off and then I'll be able to put the bedding back on. And this room is gonna be like a whole new room. It's definitely gonna be amazing to sleep in tonight. Um, it's nice enough sleeping in a clean bed, but to sleep in a deep cleaned room will be a real treat. So to clean off my mattress, I'm just using the detachment from my Shark vacuum. This is the corded vacuum and it just has this little handheld attachment. So I'm gonna go over this pretty well just because I don't want any baking soda to stay on the mattress. So um, I sped it up here and kind of cut out a little bit of it, but I went over it pretty much with a fine tooth comb because I wanted to make sure and get all the baking soda out. I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna skip my breaks and my bedding still had just a few more minutes in the dryer to finish up so I'm just getting out my broom and sweeping up um, some of this dust and also baking soda that fell off the bed and just making sure that the floors are good and swept and then I'm gonna get out my O cedar spin mop and my method would for good uh, hardwood floor cleaner and uh, just get these floors really super clean before I put all of the bedding back on. I also went and looked at my checklist and I still had a couple more things to do before I could mop. So I wanted to get these baseboards cleaned off. So these were the few baseboards that were not behind the furniture that I wanted to get all dusted off as well as clean off my door and then it'll be time to mop. And while I was cleaning, I had my phone right there and I was actually listening to a Joanna Thornton video. I found her recently and I've been really liking her cleaning videos. I really like her personality and I like the way she cleans. She's just got so much energy. <laughs> So um, it really got me motivated to clean. A lot of times I'll watch cleaning videos in order to get motivated to film. And so um, that's what I was watching on this day. So now I can finally mop and I've made my way through my entire checklist. So I'm gonna show you guys at the end um, all the things that I was able to get done today. And again, I always hope that it motivates you to get something done in your house, to get you up and moving and to get you excited about cleaning or doing any other projects that you might have to do on your to-do list. Guess I'm just too scared to settle down. There'd be many nights I got too hot and almost left town. But there's something about you, something about you I like, about you I like. I get too drunk. And to finish things off, I'm just gonna light this candle right here. It's a Casa Luna candle from the Target line. It's in the linen scent. And this is a fresh and clean room. And I am so grateful for it. And I know it's not much to look at decor wise, but I am so happy that it's at least clean. And it's clean from top to bottom, even under that really filthy bed. So I am so grateful that the room is clean and I look forward to coming back once a year to go under the bed, pull out the furniture, and do that spring cleaning in here each year. 
And in the meantime, I also have my weekly routines as well as my daily cleaning routines that will keep me on track uh, so that I can really get into the swing of this maintenance cleaning and enjoy a more clean and calm house. So thank you so much for being with me today, friends. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. This is everything we did today. You guys can do it too. I believe in you and I know you can do it. So see you guys next week. Bye guys.